An amazing way to break into the cybersecurity industry is through the governance, risk, and compliance track. It's usually a lot more forgiving on having to have an IT background or really understanding IT. It gets you exposure to IT, but it doesn't necessarily require it as a prerequisite. In this week's episode, I am going to be pulling back the curtain on CMMC, the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification Standard, which is actually being pushed down by the US government and will be a requirement in the near term, right? There's going to be so much work, there already is actually, associated with knowing what CMMC is. And it can be very overwhelming, so I'm going to cut right to the pieces that information security professionals like yourself would want to know and need to know in order to be valuable to a potential employer who's looking to get help with CMMC. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome back. So if you didn't know this already, I worked in the federal IT space in the mid uh, 2000 aughts, right? And I was a FISMA auditor. I helped manage an information security program that uh, was ad- it was in the National Science Foundation and, and had to adhere to federal IT and information security standards. Now, CMMC is kind of the evolution of that, and we'll get into that in a few minutes. But essentially, any company, and there are many, that want to do work with the US government, specifically the Department of Defense, will be required to be certified by an independent third party to a set of information security controls. So companies are scrambling right now because that's how they make money, right? That US government contracting uh, industry is huge. Uh, So people are scrambling. They need people with knowledge, expertise uh, on CMMC in order to A, either help them get ready for CMMC certification, help them understand it. Or on the other side, there's going to be a ton of audit work because every single one of these companies is going to be required to be certified, which only comes from an independent third party audit, right? So there's a ton of job opportunity here. Now, really quick, if this is your first time here, my name is Jerry Ozier. This is Simply Cyber, the YouTube channel designed to help you make and take a cybersecurity career further, faster. And sometimes we're talking about GRC like today and job opportunities. Sometimes we're interviewing experts in the field across different things. So if that's interesting to you, definitely consider hitting subscribe, definitely thumbs up because you're going to love this episode. And if you hit the bell for notification, we've got a um, live stream coming up with Heath Adams, the cyber mentor here in a few weeks. And you definitely want to be made aware when he drops in because it's going to be super sick. Okay, so let's get into this particular episode, right? So CMMC, just so we know, this is kind of the, the, the standard if you Google it, the first result, right? Now, What I want to tell you is there is just a ton of U.S. government bureaucratic bloat and confusion and there's DFARS 252-204 and stuff and like it can just get overwhelming. You're like, what do I need to know, right? I'm going to break it down for you. Ready? Use the chapters below if you want to jump around because I'm going to basically cover a, a, a few minutes on the history and then I'm going to tell you um, where you can go to get different things and then I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to know as an information security professional. So really quick, the U.S. government uh, put in standards f- called FISMA uh, for Federal Information Security Management. And FIS- I think it was in 2002, and basically FISMA said, here is a list of controls, and everybody in the federal IT space needs to be compliant with these controls. Well, fast forward, um, you know, organizations try their best to comply with it, but, you know, they don't always do it. Congress approves it, right? So, but OMB OMB got hacked, right? Part of the issue was that there is so many third-party private industry contractors doing work. If you're not familiar with the U.S. government and the way that U.S. government business works, yeah, there's civilians that all work inside um, as government employees, but they outsource a ton of it and they use it through contracts, right? So there's companies like Booz Allen, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Accenture, Deloitte. These are major players that help, um, that do all sorts of government services, right? But they're working on the same systems um, that where FISMA was supposed to control, but they're using their company laptops, which is outside the scope of FISMA. So what ended up happening was a few years ago, this thing called NIST 800-171 started getting um, dictated down. And they said, okay, listen, 800-171 800-171 is a subset of controls, a control being something that you put in place in order to reduce risk. Here's like 25 controls that you have to do. But the problem was that they allowed companies to self-assess or self-attest that they were doing those things, right? Well, 
if no one's, you know, checking that you, you know, made your bed and you don't make it, what's the penalty, right? There's no penalty. So what a lot of businesses could have been doing was self-attesting that they were in fact complying with the 800-171 standard and when in fact they weren't. Well, this is what ended up happening, right? So a lot of, you know, the breaches continued to happen, all this stuff. So the solution was CMMC. So the main difference here between 171 and CMMC is that the CMMC standard is requiring a third party independent organization to audit you. So you can no longer self attest. You have to audit, right? And that's that's where uh, all this job opportunity comes in because now if you're not certified, you're not going to be able to bid and win on a contract, which means you're not going to have money, which means your business isn't going to have money, which means you're going to go out of business, right? So now they've financially incentivized companies to get serious about their security controls. So what's this mean? A, if they're not doing good security, they need someone to come help them do good security. That's a job for us. A lot of times they don't even understand how to read those controls, right? So they need to hire someone to help them understand what they've got to do. You could be a third party company that can come in and do kind of audit prep work for uh, an organization. And then all these organizations are going to have to be audited, right? They're called three CPAOs. Those are the businesses that are or the entities that are authorized to, in fact, do the audit. And there, there's a whole host of um training and certification and stuff and payments that you have to do in order to become a uh, qualified auditor or assessor, right? And that's not for this video. Just know that that is the requirement. You can't just be some Johnny on the spot and drop in and be like, I can audit you. No, you have to be qualified, okay? So anyways, long story short, a lot of these three CPAOs are going to 1099, which means just hire you on cash. You're not an employee of the company. You're just a freelancer to do audits of these organizations, all right? So that's the background. Now let's move into actual CMMC, okay? So even though it's got all of this, you know, documentation stuff and FAQs, if you go here onto the actual model and assessment guides right here, you'll see some of these great um, documents. Now, what I want to uh, call your attention to is two things. One, um, the assessment guide right here, right? And this Excel document, where is it? right here, this Excel document. Now, two things, CMMC has five levels, level one, two, three, four, five, right? You don't really need to know them. Just know that most organizations will be seeking level three, okay? Bigger organizations, uh, more sensitive information will be going for level five. Level two and four, businesses aren't gonna go for, and level one is, is fine. And basically the difference is the level of, um, maturity of your cyber program okay but just know that most people are going for level three so that's kind of what we should be thinking of although going for level five doesn't really change what we're going to be doing for our job so if you download this um, pdf guide here and this excel sheet this is what the pdf guide looks like now all you need to know all you need to know as a professional is that there is a set of controls that you will be required to understand a and then B, help identify whether the control is in place or not and what you would need to do in order to put the control in place if it's not in place, right? And then maybe a little bit of uh, how to prove the controls in place, but that's easy because it's all in here. Now, if you look at this assessment guide, uh, this is the PDF and you scroll down, this, this, this one's awesome, right? Let's go right through this uh, table of contents, right? It explains to you all about um, what you need to do. So if you read this, this is a much more greater detail of what this video is. But listen to me. All the controls are based on control families. And this comes from the NIST Special Pub 853 series. Again, it's just a subset of controls. But check this out. This is the first control that you would need to do. The Excel document's going to make more sense. But I just want to show you this. They tell you what the objectives are, right, from 171, which is basically a hash from 853. They tell you what to examine, but here's the part I want you to really look at. The further discussion. They actually explain to you like what the control looks like and why, in a practical setting, why you would even use that control, how it could look. And there's two examples here, right? So here's some considerations. You know, are we documenting it? So this particular control is associated with limiting information system access to authorized users, right? So only people that are supposed to be accessing computers and resources are allowed to, right? It seems like an obvious control to have in place. But how do we 
how do we prove that if we if we say we are doing that? Well, you can see that you know if you're using access control policies, if you're doing reviews of um, access, if someone leaves the company and you disable all their access, right? You can do these three things, right? You can examine documentation, you can interview personnel, or you can actually test the control, right? Like, you know, you you uh, you you create a fake account, you say that they just got terminated, you disable it, and then you verify that in fact you can no longer access resources, right? So that you can just rinse and repeat with this document for greater detail. Okay, so now you understand how to get deeper detail if you need it. Now, here's a really, really important part. If you go uh, to this link right here from imec.org, I don't know who these people are, but they developed a great tool, right? This is an Excel spreadsheet, and I'll link it in the description below. But if you pull it up, you can basically see here, they've got the CMMC, let me switch screens here. They've got the CMMC levels, right, right here, one, two, three, four, five. Now, like I said before, most of us are going to target level three, and you can read the how-to here, but what I want to show you is they have all the controls that are going to be in scope for the level three of CMMC. Now, here's the best part. You can see each of these. Now, if you're going to be preparing for a role as a CMMC auditor or helping an organization um, implement CMMC, you can use this and say, okay, here's the total scope. Let me check out um, each of these controls and and understand what they each mean and you know for each one of these you can basically go back to this PDF and reference it to get a better contextual understanding so what you can basically do is go through all these and then you can say with some confidence hey listen I you know no one has gone through CMMC yet but I have gone through the standard I've gone through all the controls either a I understand how to audit so I can help you with that or B I understand, like, I can just help you. And I'm telling you right now, we're going to look at jobs in a second, but I'm telling you right now, I just switched jobs in April of 2021 and multiple jobs that I interviewed for, one of the questions was, do you know CMMC? Can you help us with CMMC? Right? And even I took a job where that was part of the deal and I'm doing other stuff there, but I am actively working and prepping to help with the impending requirement of CMMC. So there's just a ton of work there. So you can literally use this spreadsheet, which is super simplified, go through it all, understand, and like, I mean, you can actually use it and test and, and get the values and, and, you know, pick your home network, right? Run through all these and do an assessment on yourself, right? Now, um, as far as jobs go, oh, actually, I probably should mention one other thing. When you're doing CMMC, like it, it doesn't matter like what's the scope of your information system that you're auditing or the organization. Is it multinational? Uh, Is it a single business? It just know that it's all about where the controlled unclassified information or the information that the government needs you to protect per the contract that you're going to be doing business with them, right? So uh, essentially, if you're a huge business and only one small piece is doing government work, you can kind of just enclave and focus on that smaller piece. Again, that's just like some context for you. What you really need to know is what these controls are and how an organization can earn the level three certification. And it's basically by complying with these controls. Okay, so you can see this is uh, entry level and uh, mid level for um, CMMC jobs. And this is on LinkedIn. And, and just know this is a brand new standard. So a lot of people don't have this uh, knowledge yet and a lot of people want it, right? So just looking at a couple different ones, you can see here uh, information security lead, Arlington, Texas, and you know the ability to work with others, extensive knowledge in 800-171, which again is the precursor to CMMC. So if you're studying CMMC, effectively you're studying kind of 800-171, so you can take credit for that. Don't, don't get confused by that, right? So understanding the CMMC security standards, well, guess what? I literally am telling you exactly how to understand those security standards. You don't need to read all that uh, government bureaucratic bloat. You can just read the actual audit standard. So it's, it's absolutely huge, right? So if you can just understand what these controls are, then you can help an organization understand how they can reach that level three or level five. But let's focus on level three certification because at the end of the day, with all due respect to our industry of cybersecurity and the practicing professionals that we are, the business side of the house, I'm sure they want to be secure, right? But they don't care. What they want is that certification so they can 
bid on the business and win the contracts and get the revenue, right? So that is the value add that you're going to be providing to them is to say, I understand I understand the CMMC um, standards. I understand what 171 is. I understand how to go through this um, spreadsheet and you know all the different controls around configuration management, incident response, maintenance. It doesn't mean that you are an incident responder or that you have done um, security architecture or anything like that. It's just, this is what makes GRC such a great entry level uh, role for people, is it's just understanding what needs to be done uh, and if it's in place or not, right? And if, if you got a little bit of more uh, experience and IT background and stuff like that, then you can recommend how to solve the problem, right? And you can use those examples in the PDF uh, back here um, on how an organization may actually you know, achieve the goal of what that standard is asking for. You understand? Okay, so hopefully um, this was useful for you. I'm telling you right now, CMMC is hot. Um, it was supposed to be required already and they got pushed back for different reasons, but this is coming like at the end of 2021, early 2022. So this is an opportunity for you to get exposure, get an understanding of what the scope of CMMC standards are and the controls and pivot it into a job. I'm telling you, if you can say that you understand or you've got study experience with CMMC, you're going to you're going to open some doors. I also want to point out that if you uh, want to get a little bit deeper and you want to uh, get involved, um, there is a community uh, on a discord server here called the C the CUI Center of uh, Excellence, right? And the CUI is the Controlled Unclassified Information acronym. So people refer to it as CUI. But this is right here. And I will drop a link in the uh, description below on how you can join uh, this particular server, but you can come here and it's just people uh, talking about uh, CMMC all the time. You can ask questions. Uh, there's definitely entry level people in here asking entry level questions. And I've spoken to the administrators um, on this server and they are excited to help people get experience, get exposure. You probably be able to, I, I haven't seen if there's actually job channel here but there probably is a job channel and uh look at career general jobs right here you, you see that there is job postings here right so um yeah take advantage of it uh, also really quick while we're in here if you haven't been over to the simply cyber discord server check that out there's always a description in the link um below and you know you can join us there and talk about whatever grc or anything else that you're interested in so um, a reminder that the Simply Cyber, well, not Simply Cyber, Cybersecurity Career Master Plan book is coming out on September 9th, which is just a few days away from now. So the uh, 25 uh, Cyber, which is the coupon code to receive 25% off, that is valid through November 9th. So, I mean, September 9th. So if you want to uh, check out this book, I'm pretty excited about it personally. Um, you can grab that now and get 25% off. Okay, so that is basically going to do it. I hope you, uh, if this is interesting to you, I hope you uh, pursue uh, CMMC because I'm telling you, like just like cloud and identity, CMMC is hot and it's right around the corner and there's definitely going to be an opportunity. So I do recommend if you enjoyed this video, you'll enjoy this one up here, which is going to be a full class that I taught over the summer. Um, it's 12 lectures, eight labs. And there's no prerequisites or IT background needed. And it's going to give you a great exposure to information security. So that's that playlist. And down here is um, five excellent entry-level cybersecurity certifications. So you might want to check that video out too. All right. Thanks so much. And until next time, stay secure.